Okay, blasting, painting, priming, powder coating, wheels. A lot of stuff to consider. First of all, the, the type of wheel that you have. So the substrate itself, what kind of metal is it? Could be, typically it's gonna be one of two things, steel or aluminum. Makes a big difference for us how we're gonna process the wheels. So if the wheels are aluminum, it's typically more expensive. Why? Because we have to use crushed glass as our blasting media because we don't want to impregnate the aluminum wheel with steel grip. So we have to use crushed glass. So when we're using crushed glass, that is a highly friable media, which means it breaks down on impact very easily. And so it takes a lot longer to blast with glass because the removal rate is a lot slower. So if it takes a lot longer, cost goes up. Typically, on top of that, aluminum wheels are gonna be powder coated. It's very rare that we get raw aluminum wheels brought into us where we just blast it really quickly to give it a profile and then on to the powder coating shop. Almost always there's some sort of finish on an aluminum wheel. Even if it doesn't look like there is from the factory, there's typically a clear that's on there and it's usually on there pretty darn good. So even if you think you have just regular raw aluminum wheels from the factory, almost always there's a clear on there. And then obviously if there's some sort of color, you know that they've been powder coated at some point. So um, that takes a while to blast off. So aluminum wheels definitely take a lot longer to blast. When they get over to the powder coating shop, uh, pre-treatment wise, since it's aluminum, we're not using iron phosphate because iron phosphate is only gonna build a pre-treatment coating on anything that is ferrous. And aluminum is non-ferrous, means it doesn't have any iron in it. So we're using a deoxidizer and then we're using a zirconium as our pre-treatment. And so it's gonna have a zirconium conversion coating on it. And then we're gonna powder coat it. Um, aluminum wheels powder coat really well because they're typically just one solid piece. Um, it's like usually a cast piece or machined piece. So there isn't any area where there are deep cracks or welds where old debris can get in and then bubbles out in the oven. We don't have that issue with aluminum wheels. Because we have to typically blast aluminum wheels so aggressively, um, even though we're using crushed glass, still have to get really aggressive with it to get rid of all of the uh, powder coating or, or old coating that's on the wheel when it comes to us. Uh, usually if we just try to do it in one coat, there's a lot of outgassing because the blast profile is so deep. So typically when we're doing an aluminum wheels, we're gonna have to two coat those Otherwise, um, you're gonna see all the outgassing in that first coat. It's not gonna look very good, especially in high gloss finishes. So steel wheels, how do they differ from aluminum? Um, first things first, they're heavier. Um, typically some sort of welded construction, um, usually some seams that we have to deal with. Uh, a lot easier to blast because we can use our steel grit so it goes much much quicker typically steel wheels that get brought into us are older usually just have paint on them or hardly any coating left and it's just rust so steel wheels blast pretty quickly um, that's why one of the main reasons why they're quite a bit cheaper to blast and powder coat steel wheels when compared to aluminum they're about almost half the price so really nothing special when we're blasting steel wheels. You have to just make sure that um, you pay attention to, usually there's a deep crack around where the center section is welded into the outer rim. And just gotta make sure you get that cleaned out. Because if they're typically an old wheel, um, that we're, an old steel wheel is what we're usually working on. There's usually a lot of debris and rust and old paint down in that crack. So we have to make sure we blast that really well. Um, when we do get that blasted out really good, a lot of blast media can get stuck down in those seams and cracks. So you gotta make sure that we blow that out really good after the blasting is complete. And even then sometimes we can't get it all out. So when the steel wheel goes over to the powder coating shop, 
Pre-treatment is going to be iron phosphate because it's steel. It's uh, ferrous. It has iron in it. When we are pre-treating the wheels, focusing on the cracks and crevices, trying to get as much uh, pressure in there as we can with a pressure washer to try to get that cleaned out. We make sure that when we dry them in the oven, dry them for a long time at a high temperature to try to uh, boil or bake out any of the grease and oils that could be in those deep cracks and crevices. Um, and then when we go to powder coat, <clears throat> Again, just making sure we're getting down in the deep cracks and crevices of the steel wheels. And um, uh, typically we can get away with just one coating steel wheels as long as we get enough film thickness on them. Um, but you can run into bubbling problems around where those seams are at, those cracks and seams where welds are or there could be no weld there. Um, and we'll get some bubbling out of that and then that's gonna force us into a two coat situation. If it comes out bad after um, we gel it and look at it, then we'll do a little bit of sanding, use a little bit of our seam sealer and then put a second coat on it to hopefully, to hopefully uh, get it to come out. A question that we get a lot is just how, how do we want the wheels brought to us? Um, we want them down to just, just the wheel, just the rim. We don't want anything on them so uh, we don't have a tire machine. We don't have a way to take the tires off of the wheel. So make sure you take the tires off before you bring it in. Make sure you pull your bow stems out, pull your wheel weights off. Any excess grease and oil, typically not an issue on wheels. Um, usually not a lot of buildup, but if there is, take that off. Any plastic pieces, any non-metal pieces, if you have aluminum wheels, sometimes will have a center cap. Um, that's gotta come out of there, we can't can't blast and powder coat that. Uh, a lot of people ask us about chrome wheels. Definitely no. Uh, blasting and powder coating chrome wheels is not going to work. We can't uh, get all the chrome blasted off typically because that chrome plating is really fused in well with the wheel underneath. Um, you just can't get it off. You might, if it, even if you have some chrome flaking off, we might be able to get a localized area of it off of there, but then um, there's just no good uh, economical way to get the rest of that chrome off by blasting it. It takes way too long, it's way too expensive. You could easily buy a new set of wheels for what it's gonna take for us to try to get that all blasted off. Um, can we powder coat directly over a chrome wheel? No, we cannot. Um, you're not, we won't be able to get good enough adhesion. So, and some customers say, well, we don't, I don't care. I want you to try it. We've tried it. You can't get good enough adhesion. Um, no matter what you do, that chrome is um, too hard. And so any, any type of sanding or scuffing or any of the pretreatment chemicals we use, we haven't been able to get a good enough etch to get good long-term adhesion. Might be good at the shop, um, don't notice anything flaking off you kind of banging around a little bit and don't notice anything but once it gets out on the road and rocks start to hit it starts chipping off of there um, if somebody out there knows of a pretreatment chemical that works really well on chrome uh, to etch it and you can powder coat right over the top love to hear from you um, I always I don't like telling customers that we can't help them with their chrome wheels because they feel like they're stuck they don't want it to be chrome anymore they want them to be a different color and I always end up saying, I think you'd just be better off buying new wheels. So I'd love to have a different answer for them um, when they do call, but that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I think it's it's kind of industry standard um, from others that I've talked to that I haven't found anybody that, that has a good solution for it, but I'm sure someone out there does. So if you know, know about um, a better way to powder coat over chrome that you feel like you're confident in and you can get good adhesion, let us know. The different types of wheels that we get in, there's all different kinds, but typically it's wheels for cars and trucks that are just, you know, everyday drivers. Could be really new vehicles, could be um, older vehicles. Usually newer vehicles are gonna be the aluminum wheels, older vehicles are gonna be the steel wheels. Um, we've talked about both kinds of wheels. If you're wondering, if you're trying to call and get a quote and you have no idea if your wheels are steel or aluminum, just take a magnet put it up against the wheel 
if the magnet sticks to the wheel, it's steel. If it doesn't stick anywhere on the wheel, then it's gonna be aluminum. That's an easy way to tell, aluminum's not magnetic, okay? So we definitely need to know it, whether it's steel or aluminum, I and mean, we need it to be accurate when we're giving a quote, because the pricing is so much different. Um, other than just regular vehicles that are on the street, um, we do a lot of blasting and coating of uh, implement wheels for tractors and combines and things like that, kind of the ag market. Um, we also do tiny wheels for go-karts and mowers, um, done wheels, also wheels for race cars are a little bit different sizing for, than what a regular vehicle is on the street. Implement farm type wheels, those are really, really big. So we can, we've done ones up to like 70 inches in diameter. Um, so that's getting really big. Um, we've done some up to about around 60 inches in diameter. Um, so that's getting pretty big. And again, depending on the style and the age of the wheel um, in kind of that farm type setting, it, it, that will dictate the type of condition it comes to us. And so obviously if it's an older one, usually paint's falling off, it's really rusty. It's more of a cast, um, cast iron type of wheel. Um, and you can tell that it's very old. Um, usually multiple parts, so there's some cracks and crevices, usually some spokes in it. Um, typically around the hub area, there's some, some portions of it that need to be masked because um, it's actually races or bearings, or customer could bring it to us and it still has bearings in it um, or bolted to it. And we have, um, we have to either take those off or typically we'll tell them they need to take them off before they bring them to us and um, get any of the excess grease and oil off of there. So usually the older style uh, farm wheels tend to be the most expensive. They're pretty large and then there's a lot of extra, there's some extra work with this prep, getting it all cleaned up from all the grease, excessive grease that's on there and any masking that we have to do. Then newer style um, farm wheels where it's more of a bolt pattern for, you know, that goes right on a tractor or a combine. Um, we do a lot of brand new wheels where it's, where it's just a uh, primed gray or white and then we're tr putting like an ag yellow or an ag green or a black um, over the top of that, we do that quite a bit. Again, really large wheels, um, large diameter, large width. Um, so obviously those are more expensive. As far as processing wise, um, blasting's not a whole lot different. You're gonna blast the same way, it's just bigger, so harder to handle, harder to move around. When we get over to the powder coating shop, um, as most of you know that follow powder coating and follow us, we're pretty much hanging everything. So normal size wheels are all getting hung. Um, then when it comes to large implement wheels, we're typically not hanging those because they are so heavy, we'd be worried that they're going to fall. So we have some special jigs made up that we use for the large, um, farm. So a lot of the time we have customers calling when they're doing restore work on old vehicles and they got steel wheels that they want to get blasted and primed. Um, I'm a... I'm very against just blasting and priming wheels. Uh, I always think we should just blast and powder coat them. And the reason being is because it's it's either the same price or cheaper for us to blast and powder coat the wheels as it would be to blast and prime. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think I'm crazy when I say that, but we aren't set up to prime small runs of wheels in our liquid coating booth. Just four wheels. Um, to set up in a special primer just for those wheels. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. There's a lot of setup time involved. Um, the paint, the primer itself is actually pretty expensive if you use a good primer. And so it's, it's usually cheaper and a lot quicker for us to just blast and powder coat. Um, we really try to shy away from priming. Some customers get really frustrated um, with us, but I would rather either just blast it only and then let the customer prime it um, or we blast and powder coat. Don't like to liquid coat wheels. Again, just price wise, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Might as well just uh, get the tire taken off and then we can um, blast and powder coat. It's gonna be uh, gonna end up with a better finish. 
um, and it's not going to cost as much. So in some cases with really big farm implement wheels, it just doesn't make sense or for whatever reason they can't get the tire off um, or it's a very specialized tire and, they, and it's old and they don't want to ruin that tire. So in that particular case, we will blast and then liquid coat and uh, very specialized. We may do that once a year on like one or two wheels. Um, in that particular case, so there is a tire on the, on the wheel still. So when we go to blast, um, typically the blast media isn't going to be too abrasive for the actual rubber tire that's in place. Um, you don't want to blast right at that rubber tire, especially if it's old and has some dry rot happening. Um, but as long as you're skilled and you can stay away from that rubber uh, of the tire, you should be fine. Um, when you go to actually liquid paint it, you're going to have to mask all of that off because you don't want to paint the actual tire, you just want to paint the rim. That is extremely time consuming. It takes longer to mask than it does to blast or than it does to paint. So most of the cost in those wheels would be um, to mask them. So it's significantly more expensive to blast and paint a farm type of wheel, really large wheel that goes on a tractor if the tire is still on it, it's, it's way more expensive, probably triple or quadruple the cost of what it would be just to blast and powder coat it. Um, if the if you just strip the tire and valve stem and wheel weights all off of it, and then brought the uh, the rim into us, we blasted and powder coated it, it'd be way, way cheaper, and it's uh, gonna be more durable. One kind of extra part that could come along with um, the tractor type wheels, especially the older antiques, and we get a lot of call, uh, questions about this. Um, a lot of time there's some wheel weights that come along with those. There's also um, some like bolt-on hubs and things like that, and we can do all that stuff um, as long as the weight is a material that um, isn't gonna melt in the oven. Um, we, can, we can blast a powder coat, all that stuff. Obviously, if there's some hubs and things involved, it's gonna be greases and oils that need to make sure that's all cleaned off before you bring that down. And then we, you need to make sure you communicate with us so we know what needs to be masked and what doesn't need to be masked. Um, but yes, we can help um, with, with those types of parts. Uh, another question that we get asked on aluminum wheels typically is if we can do multicolor. Um, yes, that's possible. No, we don't do that at Kaser. Um, the reason why we don't is just because the masking intricacy that take that that's gonna have takes a really long time and that's just not something we specialize in. There are shops that some of the biggest parts they do are wheels um, and so they do all kinds of fancy masking and um, different multicolors and wiping off in between coats or vacuuming off certain areas between coats and they can get a really cool looking wheel definitely um, but that's just not something that we do we want to do the whole wheel one color um, preferably all four wheels or your set of wheels all one color and and just be done we don't want to do any uh, specialized masking multi-color um, wheels like i said it can be done it's just not something that we do internet uh, we just stick to our stock colors we don't like to to order in anything special for just one set of wheels. Um, even if the customer wants to pay for it, we're not familiar with spraying that powder. Uh, typically, if they're wanting to order one in, it's very fancy. It's a multi-coat system. Kind of going back to our, um, we had a theme on bright neon colors. Um, and we also talked about some multi-layer metallics. Um, I can understand why you would want that for your wheels. They could look um, very cool, but that's just something that we shy away from because doing a one-off um, in a really special crazy color um, usually is a recipe for disaster and it's not gonna turn out well or we're gonna have to redo it multiple times to get the actual look that the sample panel shows. It's not always easy to accomplish that, um, especially when you're doing have, having to do like a two or three coat system and every coat has to be perfect um, to get the finish that you're looking at. So um, if you do want a specialized color, are there coders out there that do it? Yes, 
um, probably the same ones that'll do multicolor on your wheels will do um, the special colors that you want. Um, but we don't do that. We just stick with our stock colors. That's what we have the most success with. We're the most familiar with. Um, and one other topic we need to cover is uh, wheel repair. Um, we have a lot of questions about can we repair wheels? If you got a steel wheel that's dented or beat up, can we fix it? Or can we weld on it? Um, or aluminum wheel that has like road rash or big gash in it. Um, is blasting going to fix that? Is the powder coating going to cover that up? No. Um, answer to all that's no. So we can't help fix wheels. We don't have the capabilities of doing that. We don't have the capability of straightening a wheel or balancing a wheel. Um, we don't really want to weld on your wheels. Aluminum, um, no, blasting is not going to take out the road rash. Um, it's not going to take out really deep gashes. You can get those fixed at other wheel places. There are typically like aluminum alloy repair places that you can get that taken care of. Um, that's not something that we specialize in at Kaiser. So if you got a big gash in the wheel, after we blast it, it's still going to be there. After we powder coat it, it's still going to be there.